and I wanted to make another color because I'm so addicted to this now. And I think we're going to make some purple or whatever color it becomes, right? And first off, I want to show you what paper I'm using to practice on. This is the Arteza paper. This is the premium. Um, they have two different types. They got the premium and the expert one. The expert one is beautiful and I decided not to use the expert paper for doing the um, experimenting because it's it's a little bit more pricey um, but not terrible. So anyways, uh, we're using that paper. Oops, I'm going to put it here. And I wanted to show you uh, the last painting I did was this one, right? And I want to show you that the uh, one of the tests that I saw on another artist, she was showing how when you rub the paint when it's dry to see if it comes off, if the pigment comes off. And so it's 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 pretty good. I'm not getting any color coming off, very little. So I'm doing something right. <laughs> But this is the finished piece. I went ahead and added two more little leaves on there and I thought they looked better with the two little leaves. I still want to add a little darker blue in there. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that part. So let's go ahead and play. I want to make the purple so we all know, or maybe not, but you have red and blue make purple. And I have red oxide and ultramarine blue. Now I can't guarantee how well this is going to go because what happens when you're mixing colors, this is a cool, a cool color, uh, it's kind of a cooler color and this is a warm color, right? Although it doesn't look too bad, it could be a little bit more on the cooler side. But when you're mixing the different tones like that, you'll get different results, but I just love these love these I in fact I love these powders so much these pigments I ordered some more I haven't told my husband he's probably going to have a cow man <laughs> no he won't but uh, yeah I went ahead and bought some more paints or pigments so I'm getting those in a couple more days and I, it's just so fun to do this is so addicting um, so we're gonna start out with two scoops of each okay and if you watch my last video or if you have not um, it takes about five scoops of the pigment to create a half palette or a half a palette oh my gosh it's towards the end of the night for me but I just can't stop playing um, yeah so a half pan we're making a half pan, not a half pellet. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna fill this baby up. And I'm gonna get two scoops of the red. I wanna do equal parts because I think we're gonna get a really good combination. I probably shouldn't be dipping this in the same, uh, it's got a little blue on there, so I'm actually contaminating my red, so. <laughs> but you know. That's what I, that's how I roll. <laughs> so this is going to be a, a different kind of purple. And we shall see what it turns out to be. I'm going to leave these open. Because I will come back to them. And chances are I might need a little brown. And I might need a little black. But we shall see how it ends up. I've got my um, mixture here. My gum Arabic, and I have a pipette. Oops, maybe not. That one's kind of grubby. Guess I need to get rid of that one. Oh, okay. This one's good. So I'm gonna put in four. Uh, I don't know if these are like oh uh, milliliters. Is that right? Does that sound right? has an ml so maybe it's a milliliter so I'm gonna put four of those in there okay then um, 
totally unprepared. I'm going to stir it up with my paintbrush. Let's see what this turns out to be. When I was uh, a hairdresser, this is what we did a lot of, playing around with color. And it was just so fun. But I also took a lot of art classes, so I kind of know my way around color. But it's different, obviously, with pigments, because I am not seeing purple whatsoever in this. So, it looks like we're going to have to do some more playing around and adding a lot more blue. So, but we haven't ground it up yet. So, let's go ahead and add one more scoop of blue. So, now we have five scoops in here. Okay. And go from there. So, let's see what happens. Maybe it will be magical. <laughs> or not. This is going to take a little while. This is pretty dry. I'm going to add another um, one more ml. Let's see if we get one more in there. I think too with um, some of the pigments, they're, some are more transparent than others. So it's possible that the ultramarine blue has uh, more transparency than the, the red. This just doesn't look anything like purple to me. It still looks pretty darn red. Wow, that's just amazing. I really thought I would have a purple because of putting the blue in there, but there is no purple showing up on this. Nothing. All right, well, we're gonna make this purple somehow. So, uh, where's my scooper? Oh, we're going to put a lot of this blue. I just have a feeling it's going to be not as purpley as I want. We're putting two more scoops. So that's four, let's see, two, four, four scoops of the blue. And let's put a little bit more of the... Uh, one more. Okay. Oh, it's not going to turn purple. Well, this is good to know because I've never used these like this. This isn't my first time of using these pigments. So I'm still in the er experimental stage here. Oh, come on. Boy, that's really I don't like it to get too wet, so I gotta write this stuff down before I forget. It's a lot of going in circles. It's getting darker, it's getting like a darker uh, red. All right, I'm not seeing any purple. I think that blue stuck to the bottom there. Give it a little more. Oof. Well, it's making it a really pretty, um, like a brick uh, red. I don't know if we're going to get blue, uh, purple out of this. I think it's just too much uh, difference in the in the uh, pigments.
All right, let's test it out. See what it looks like. Well, look at that. It is kind of, what's the color I want to call this? Um, you can see it. You can see it. This is actually uh, a pretty color. I really like the dark colors and how, yeah, you can see the blue is starting to show up a little bit in that. Um, see, you can see it. It just took so much. All right, so what did we have? We had four, four scoops of blue. We had two scoops of red. Is that it? Hmm. And then we had six drops of the, um, oh my goodness, what you would call it? When it's the end of the day, your brain doesn't like to think anymore. Um, anyways, can you see that blue in there? That, that's gorgeous. I am loving this. It may not look cool. I mean, I like this color. I really do like this color a lot. Okay, so I'm happy with this. I am going to leave it. Now, I do have some uh, micas. Let me get them out of here. I have some mica colors. Maybe, maybe just a hint, right? Just a little bit of this. Yeah. This is when you're exploring as a hairdresser, learning how to play with color and all that stuff. Oh my God. Some of the colors we came up with. I am going to add just like a half a scoop. It's going to change it, but not a whole lot. I, I don't think it'll change it too much. Now this is the one where I probably should be wearing my mask because this stuff, the mica, is really fine. And uh, there we go. So it makes it kind of sticky. Okay, let's test it. Kind of like this better, but it's still the same color. Let's let it dry a little bit. What I've also found is if you lift it, you can see some of the color underneath. You can see that color pop through. It's pretty. I am very, very happy with this color. So there you go. I'm just going to put it in its container. I'm going to close everything up. I will do a painting later um, to show you what I made with this. Not sure what I'm going to do at this moment. So I will be back one more day. All right, so I wanted to show you because um, I was putting this in the, uh, the half pan there. But I've got a, still a lot of pigment on here. And so I added more of the gum Arabic. I actually remembered the name. And I am making some more. I'm just thinning it out. I'm trying to get some of this color off of here because there's a lot of, lot of color on there. And I don't know 
why it's all stuck so snugly on here. Um, but when I added the, um, the mica powder on there, it made it more sticky. So, not sure why that is. But I added just a small amount, so it's confusing. But I'm just going to make, this is a thinner batch. And I'm thinking that this might be better than this thick one, but we'll see. I'm actually getting two batches out of this, two pans. Half pans. <laughs> all right, so let's get this all put in that pan before this all dries up. This dries pretty quick, just so you know. I haven't had any problem with this drying except for that one time when I just used this the uh, jacquard um, pigment that did not work because I used the honey I'm not using honey in this at all so okay look how much I'm getting out of this That's quite a bit. I like the feel of this better, the consistency of this one. This one is super thick. Okay. And I'm gonna test it just to see if this is any different. I don't think it is. See, it pretty much looks the same. I love this color. Not maroon, but close. <laughs> How pretty that is. Okay, now I'm done. Okay, here it is, the finished piece. I went ahead and darkened that up a little bit after I did the video, but um, I added some of the blue and uh, at the bottom and a little bit of that beautiful, I don't know what to call it yet. <laughs> um, yeah, that's another thing, maybe later on we can um, name these together. And here is the dried, um, 
paint from yesterday and I corrected that I had five blue scoops, not four. And these are heavily granulated. You can see that there's a lot of texture in this. And I really, really like that look. Um, I have bought some paints from Daniel Smith that are like that and I really enjoy working with them. So there you go. There's the final piece. Thank you very much for watching. Music